guys, what's up? Thank you so much for tuning in today here at Elevate Church. We know that today's message is going to rock your world and elevate you to the next level in your life. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the message. Wasn't it good just to, just to say feelings? Wasn't it good just to finally be able to say it's okay to have feelings? Well, I'm excited. I love the song. I was like, I need the song for my new series. Remember, if you were with us last year, I did a, um, a series that was called Emojis. Are you here for those? Okay, so I, I thought, and we were talking with my husband, and he says, you know what? I think that should be a series that should be done, you know, yearly. So I thought, you know what? Let's move away from emojis, and let's talk about the real deal. What is it that as Christians... And even I have said it, that we are afraid of our emotions. Because we think that the moment that we talk about them, that's the moment that we're walking away from faith. But I believe that God has commanded us, he has given us a command that we need to prosper in all things. So I'm going to give you my first scripture, and it's 3 John 2.2. Because I believe that tonight we're going to have freedom. I believe that tonight you and I are going to get hope because maybe you're sitting here in this church and you find yourself in a very hard place. You find yourself with all these things that are taking place in your life and then you're standing in faith, but there's things that are happening. There's things that you're going to feel. And sometimes we think that when we are feeling, we're not in faith. The Bible doesn't say to to follow our emotions, but the Bible doesn't say to suppress our emotions. And so 3 John 2.2 says this. It says, Beloved, I pray that in every way you may succeed and prosper and be in good health physically, just as I know your soul prospers spiritually. So what's the soul? We just finished, I just finished on a Wednesday, I I did uh, the mini series called um, Mind Under Construction, right? So we love to talk about faith. Think about it. Think about this. And I was just thinking about uh, emotions and our soul prospering. And this year, we said that this year as a church, we're going to grow. So we need to, if we're going to grow, we need to address every part of ourselves. So the soul is your will, your mind, and emotions. But we love, I love to talk about renewing the mind. I love to talk about faith. And I don't really like to talk about emotions. Because we think that if we talk about emotions, if we acknowledge our emotions, that we're not in faith. But I believe that God created us so beautifully that he wants us to prosper in all things. He wants, he wants us to prosper in our mind. He wants us to prosper in our will and what we want to do. But he also wants us to prosper in our emotions. Our emotions are, were created so we can connect with God. Our emotions were given to us so we can connect with others. Our emotions were given to us, to us so I can even know myself. So say this, emotions are not bad. Are feelings are not bad. Are They're bad. just feelings. They're just emotions. It's what we do with them that matters. So, one thing that I know that we need to know, and let me give you a little bit of a little bit of what the Word of God says, what the soul is in the Hebrew and in the Greek. So this is in the Greek because it's in the New Testament. So the soul means the seed of of the feelings, desires, affections, and aversions are hard our souls, our feeling, etc. But you know, I was thinking as I was preparing for this message and I I was going over all my notes from last year, I was thinking um, many times even myself, when I have felt things in my heart, and I'm talking about emotions, I'm talking about feelings. Well, what's an emotion? An emotion is to feel is to feel fear. An emotion is to feel anger. An emotion is to feel joy. An emotion is to feel happy. All those are emotions. And many times we are so afraid of them. And I was thinking about my upbringing. I was thinking about how was I brought up? How, how, were we okay sharing how we feel? 
And I thought to myself, no, uh we were not okay sharing how we feel. Because we need to be strong. And many times as Christians, I believe that we see our emotions as a, a part of our weakness. And you know what? Even if your emotions are out of whack, God, God is not afraid of them. We're not saying follow your craziness. That's not what we're saying here. God is saying whenever you feel an emotion that's overwhelming, I want you to prosper in that emotion. I want you to grow. I want you to, I want you to search. Why are you feeling that? Our emotions are, are not something that we should fear. Our emotions, I believe that God gave us emotions so we can know. It's, it's like, it's, it, it's just telling us, like, there is something wrong. Right? One morning you wake up and you, feel, and you feel depressed and you feel a little bit sad. And what do we do? We try to shove it. We try to push it away. We try to, oh, I'm not going to feel that because I'm a Christian. And I believe that that's what many of us, many of the body of Christ, children of the most high God, we walk defeated in life because we are so afraid of how we feel. I believe that depression, you know, and I used to be depressed. I know what depression is, so I recognize depression when it's coming from far away. Because if depression is just a set of emotions that are overwhelming you. But depression, I believe, depression comes because it could be your body. It could be that you're physically, chemically imbalanced. It could be there's something is missing. Mind you, the word of God says that he wants us to prosper in all things. He wants us to prosper physically, which means he cares. God cares about our health. So what we did tonight, praying for, for Maggie and believing that she's whole and healed, that is the will of God because he wants us to be whole and healed. What we've been doing every year, and we did just a few couple of weeks ago when we're talking about our mind, God wants us to talk about our mind. God wants us to talk about our thoughts because it matters because we need to grow in that area. Because we need to be transformed. But then I thought, you know what? Our emotions, they always get their last. And I have done that. I don't like it. As a matter of fact, when I came to the Lord, I didn't like it. Because for the first time in my life, I was weeping and I was crying. And I didn't like it. Because I didn't know how that felt. I didn't like it. And so we're not comfortable. And, I'm, and, and, and this is what I'm saying tonight. I want you to listen to me. I'm not saying, oh, hey, follow your emotions. Just wake up and see, hey, how are we feeling today? No. What I'm saying to you is that God wants you to be aware of what's happening in our soul. That it's not okay to ignore it. It's not okay to shove it. It's not okay to, to, to hide it. No. God wants you to say, hey, how am I feeling today? And why am I feeling what I'm feeling? And I'm going to prove it to you because we have a God. We were creating the image and likeness of God. And do you know that God felt? Do you know that God is a God that is, he is in touch with his feelings. He's in touch with his emotions. Did you know that? Or do you know that? Some of you are like, no, he's not. Oh, well, let me tell you, yeah, he is. Let me give you a few scriptures. So you will get it out of your mind. And then you'll be able to receive what I'm about to tell you, okay? Genesis 6, 6, 6 says, says this. And this is God the Father. The Lord was grieved that he had made men on the earth. And his heart was what? Oh, all right. Genesis 6, 6. The Lord was grieved that he had made men on the earth. And his heart was filled with pain. I did send you the scriptures. That's the father. It says that God, our Lord, was grieved. What's grieved? Do you understand what the word means? He says he was grieved and he was sad. He had sorrow in his heart. But we, when we feel sorrow, when we feel grieved, we, we don't want to deal with it. Well, let me tell you that God wants you to deal with it, with him. Jesus, the son. Matthew 26, 37, and 38 says this. And taking with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, James and John, he began to be grieved and greatly distressed. Those are not thoughts. Those are emotions. Those are feelings. He says he began to be grieved and greatly distressed. Then he said to them, my soul is deeply grieved so that I am almost dying to sorrow. 
stay here and stay awake and keep watch with me. So I read your scripture and that was God the Father grieving, feeling. I read you this scripture and this is painting a picture to you and me that Jesus experienced emotions. He was grieved to the point of, he said, you know what, I don't even know if I can make it. He was, he was grieved to the point that he wanted to die. He didn't know if he can go through with the calling and the mission that his father, our heavenly father, had given him. But see, he, the word of God is here so we are able to see, you know what? Jesus didn't say, you know, I'm not feeling this. No, he said it. He was in touch in how he felt. But just because he acknowledged that he was grieved, just because he acknowledged that he couldn't even move forward, just because he acknowledged that I, I, I don't know if I'm going to make it to the cross, that, did, that doesn't mean that he disobeyed God. No, it meant that he acknowledged what was taking place in his heart. He acknowledged what was taking place in his soul. But he says, you know what, nevertheless, I'm going to do what my father has asked of me. The Holy Spirit. Ephesians 4.20 says this, and do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. You know, sometimes, and I, can I be honest with you? <laughs> sometimes, even as Christians, when people um, lose loved ones, or not lose, that's uh, the wrong term, when when they have a family member passes away, I feel that we don't know how to, how to grieve with our brothers and our sisters. We don't even know what to say. And this is coming from me. I'm not saying you don't know what to say, but it's, this is me. That I wanna be there for that person but because I'm not acquainted with what's happening in my soul many times, I don't know. And I have, and I have felt people to be there for them. Not because I didn't want to be there for people. It's just that I didn't know how to be there for people. Because I'm so caught up in my faith growing, in my mind being renewed. But you know what? What happens to the seed of emotions? Like, that should be last. You know, Kate. Faith says, get over it. And I'm not saying you have done it, but I felt as I, was, as I was putting this message, you know, Virginia, how many times you didn't know what to say, not because you didn't feel, but you just didn't know. You, you didn't know. And I feel that that's what many times, you know, people, when their family uh, members, you know, passes away, many people leave the church. Because maybe, just maybe, we're not acquainted. Just maybe, just maybe, we're just so like disliked because we've been told, I don't know, maybe as children or, or maybe we hear it in a church. And hey, I have said it like emotions, you know, you run away from them. But that's not what the Bible says. So if you and I were creative in the likeness, in the likeness of God, so if God thinks, you think. Right? If God creates, then you create. If God feels, how come I'm not feeling it? How come I don't give myself permission to feel? Because we think that to feel is to sin. But I'm here to tell you that to feel is not to sin. It's what you do when you feel that it's is what's going to shape you and make you. What I'm saying to you tonight is that uh, tonight I'm just going to give you a base, a, a, a foundation of feelings and emotions so we don't run away from them. We don't let them run our lives, but we are aware of them. And I believe that that's what God wants you and I to know. Be aware of how you feel because I want you to prosper. We just finished our amazing, our amazing series, Stewardship, right? We want to steward our finances. We want to steward my words. I want to steward this. I want to steward that. I want to steward my career, my family. But we don't steward our emotions. Okay, I'm one of them. And I believe that 
this year we're going to walk in so much freedom. I believe that God wants us to stand and to believe in faith. And I believe that if we desire and we choose to grow in every area of our lives, not just in our mind, but just in our body, but we address the part of that soul that has our emotions, I believe that you and I are going to be stronger. I believe that you and I are going to be more effective for the body of Christ. We and I are going to be more effective for the world that needs hope. But many times we don't even know how to give hope. I remember years ago when my husband uh, was in the hospital, and, um, and I know I, I think I told you that story, but he was in the hospital, and then they're giving us, they're giving me all of this, all of this news that, you know, they didn't know if he was going to make it. They didn't know if he's going to last another week, and, you know, now his la lung is collapsed, and now the other one seems like it's going to collapse, and now he has pneumonia, and now he has this, and, and I remember just listening to all that. And trying to contain what I was feeling, trying to say, you know, I'm not going to cry because if I cry, then I'm not in faith. And then the more you try to fight, because it's, 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 hey, he's my husband. It's okay. You, it's okay. You can cry. There's nothing wrong with crying. Women, you have permission to cry. And men, so do you. Whatever you do, you sob. I don't know. You cry. You're fine. But you have permission. I believe that God has given us permission. And that doesn't mean that you're not in faith. But I remember that. I remember that. And I remember like it was, it was yesterday because I was fighting so much. You see, I was fighting not to feel. I wanted to be in faith. So if I'm in faith, I shouldn't be feeling all this. No, we are human. It's the beauty of the creator that gave us all of those wonderful things. You and I have been beautifully created, not just to be creative, not just to be faithful, not just to be well-spoken, not just to have good thoughts, but also to feel. Okay, and don't write me a letter because I'm telling you it's okay to feel. It's in the word of God. Our God is in touch with every emotion. That's what Jesus is able to understand us. That's why he says, come to me. We read the verse, oh, if you're heavy laden, if you're carrying these burdens, how do you feel when you're heavy? We don't even know how to say how we feel. How does it feel to be heavy? How does it feel to be, to be like all with all carrying all these problems? How does that feel? It doesn't feel good. No, but that's not a feeling. How does it feel? It feels crappy. Hey, that's a word. It doesn't, it doesn't feel well. But he's saying, hey, if you are heavy, if you are carrying all these problems, he says, come to me. Come to me and bring me all of that that you're feeling. Do you understand that? It's okay that you need to know that God is able to heal you. God is able to deliver you. God is able to get us out of depression. I am preaching tonight because God is real. And that's the truth. And I believe that God wants you to, um, God wants you to be acquainted with who you are and how beautifully He has created you. I believe that in the body of Christ we have so many people that still have the same problems, just like the world has it. Uh, as a matter of fact, our church, uh, the body of Christ, I think is ranking higher in divorce. As a matter of fact, I think that church is ranking higher in 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 families being torn apart. If you do, if you look at it, it's like, so what is the difference? They feel everything, but we don't feel nothing. See, the difference, I believe, is that God wants us to know that he is able. He is able to deliver us. I, I believe that God wants us to know that we're able to walk in faith. We have been called to walk by faith and not by sight, right? Okay, but that doesn't mean we don't see. Yeah, we do see in the natural, but God is saying, I want you to... I'm not saying close your eyes. He didn't say, I want you to walk blind. 
I want you to walk this earth blind. No, he'd say, he'd say no, 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 you're going to walk on this earth and you're going to see everything. And you're going to taste everything. And you're going to feel everything. However, I want you to live by faith. I want you to live by my word. And I believe that if you and I stop being um, fearful, because you might not be fearful, but maybe you're weak. I don't, like, I don't even like the title. And we think we're very emotional because it's so easy to be super, like, emotional and, and share our feelings on social media. Right? You feel you're pretty open. Oh, everybody knows me, how I feel. Today I feel blessed. Right? Hashtag and all these things, right? So we feel like, hey, this is, we're good. But do you know that when you're texting, and this is a fact, when you're texting, we're sending texts, you know that your brain doesn't record it, you don't even feel it. You're saying things, but it's, it doesn't come across, you're not going to remember it. And I believe that that's what texts go back and forth, and we say all these things that we don't even remember because it's not being recorded. And this is a fact. Google it. Google it. That's what it is see today to be in communication. We're so good. Hey, I, I'm going up in my relationships because I'm sending emails. I'm sending emails because, hey, I'm typing. I don't have to speak. Now we don't even talk on the phone. We just text, right? And so see, and we think we're doing good, and hey, we're connecting more. No, you and I, the reason we have feelings and emotions is so you and I can connect. So you and I can fellowship. So you and I can grow. So we and I don't have to be afraid of each other and how we feel. But you and I can encounter our living God. You and I can come to church and share what we're going through. Not with everybody. Okay, so you listen to the message on Sunday, right? We have to be, like, careful with, hey, who is in our inner circle? But I believe that that's the power, the beauty of God. That you and I can walk in great freedom. You and I can walk in great victory if we do not allow the enemy to tear us apart. Right now, the majority of people are having church at home. Why? Because it's easy. You know, I don't have to deal with you. I don't have to deal with anybody. I don't have to talk to you. I can praise God in my own house. I can feel God in my own house. Are you going to feel God? Is he going to transfer through the TV or whatever you're watching? Yes, because God is faithful. So, yes, you, you can have church by yourself. But you cannot be the church by yourself. That's the difference. Yeah, you can have church by yourself. But we're not called to have church. We're called to be the church. So we need to fellowship. We need to connect. And, and people, wherever there's people, there's mess. Because we create beautiful messages for Christ. Wherever there is people, we have the opportunity to grow. Whenever there is people, we have the opportunity to get out of our bubble. Whenever there is uh, other people, we have the opportunity to exchange. And the faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So we need to hear. We need to share. We need to live. I believe that one of the, um, one of the, I, I, I love this. My husband, I think he said it a, a couple of us. Uh, Wednesdays ago, he says that, he says, the fruit of the spirit is the emotions of God. So let us go there because it is, the fruit of the spirit is something that we are to experience, right? Galatians 5, 22 and 23 says this. It says, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, against such there is what? No law. And I love what the message, so I, I compare, okay, th these are, what's love? That Love is an emotion, but we don't understand love because, hey, I love chocolate cake, I love burritos, I love hamburgers, so we, we think that's love. No, love is an affection. It's something that we experience. It's something that we feel. You don't feel the chocolate cake. You eat it. You don't feel that burrito. Well, you might later on. I felt a couple burritos through my life, but 
but that's a different feeling. Love. I'm going to read you what the message says in each, in each fruit. Love, affection for others. Joy, exuberance about life. Peace, serenity. Long-suffering, a willingness to stick with things. Kindness, compassion in the heart. Goodness, a conviction that a basic holiness permeates things and people. Faithfulness, involved in loyal commitments. Gentleness, not needing to force your way in life. And self-control, able to marshal and direct our energies wisely. See, the fruit of the Spirit is the character of God. And you and I are supposed to experience that. So I have a question for you. You have to ask yourself today, and you have to say, to what degree am I, do I have these fruits in my life? This feeling, these emotions. How am I doing in love? How am I doing in patience? How am I doing in kindness? How am I doing in long-suffering? Nobody likes that one. I don't like long-suffering. I wish God would have said short sufferings. Why are you just short? I, if I don't like it, I don't, I don't have to stick to it. But see, long suffering means you're committed and you're going to stay there. But see, these are the feelings that to me, it's, and I love what he said. These are the emotions of God. This is the character of God. It's something that he is giving. God gave us everything that you and I need. So you can say, well, there is, I don't have no love. No, he gave us everything that we need. But he gave it to us. He says it's a fruit. So, so to me, it's like, okay, he just gave me a seed. But I want God to be to do that for me. I want God to, to um, have you ever met people that, uh, well, I'm going to say three things that we, I believe that we as Christians, we, we don't like these three emotions. And it's anger, fear, and another one. I wrote it down so I wouldn't forget it. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna go to go into, I'm going to go into, into anger because I believe that there's something that we fight in sadness. I believe that, that we stay away. We don't want to hear it. But I'm going to give you a, a few scriptures where God says, be angry. Psalms 4.4. And I'm not saying, hey, go be mean to people. What I'm saying is, like, you are going to feel angry. If someone comes and is going to come to my house and is going to be uh, telling me, it's going to be talking and saying bad words to my family, I'm going to get angry. If you don't get angry, I don't know, you're probably a zombie. You're going to get angry. Jesus got angry. When he went to the temple and he saw all, you know, the, the, the temple had, they turned it into like a market. He was angry. But it's what do you do when you get angry? Okay, Psalms 4.4. 4. And I'm going to close soon. Be angry and do not sin. Meditate within your heart on your bed and be still. What does it say? Don't be afraid to say it. What does it say? And what? And the Amplified says this, tremble with anger or fear. Have you ever been so angry that you're shaking? The Bible says it. Hey, it says if you have to shake it because you're so mad, shake it. Shake it. You know what? Release it. Being angry doesn't mean you go tell people, let me tell you what I think. No, it means, you know what, I'm not going to, I'm not going to shove it. I'm not going to hide it because it's okay to be angry. It's not okay to sin. It's not okay for me to go back and then me tell people and start like damaging people and start going crazy. See, that's when it turns into sin. But he's saying, hey, you're going to be angry. And I love what he says, meditate in your heart upon your bed and be still. Reflect on your sin and repent of your rebellion. But see, many times, uh, have you ever been angry? Like, I've been angry. I, I have a 
I have a perfect picture, but I'm not going to share it. It was the top of my, of the mountain. <laughs> but anger, like you are angry. And then you want to just say things. You just want to like release the dragon. Is that the, the, the name for the movie, right? Yeah. Release the beast. No, no, no. It's not releasing the beast. It's not releasing, oh, let it be and just let it flow. That's not what it means. It just means, you know what? You're going to feel it and it's okay to be angry. As a matter of fact, sometimes we need to be angry because we, Jesus was angry. People need to know if you did something wrong. And so it doesn't say like, it doesn't say pretend that you're not angry. It doesn't say suppress your anger. And then when you go to sleep, I want you to meditate on the things that you should have said to that person. No, that's not what it means. It means, hey, you know what? I was angry. And, and the Lord says, I'm going to meditate. I'm going to go to bed because God knows how it works. And then at night, we're going to go and we're going to meditate on what made us anger. If we that we're being so angry. And then we're going to meditate on it. So he's saying, meditate, but don't let it make it and turn into a sin. Don't let your thoughts run. We're going to meditate. You're going to say, you know, yes. Uh, Father, I, I'm giving you my emotion right now. Because right now, I want to retaliate. Right now, I want to post it on Facebook. Right now, I want to send an email to everybody. Right now, you can go through all the things that you want to do. See, in this, this is where we get cut up. No, God is saying, no, no, I don't want you to get cut up in that moment. I don't want you to get cut up in the moment. But I don't want you to be afraid of feeling it. You know, after all, like whenever we allow anger to fester, that's when we become unforgiving. You know, and you hear it, even God knew it, but if you, if you study psychiatry or you study all, all those things, and which they're wonderful, even they tell you that anger is a secondary emotion. You believe that. So we all get caught up in the anger, 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 but we never, we never really go deeper. And I believe that God is saying, uh, this year I want to peel some layers. My husband showed a few weeks ago uh, the iceberg, and 10% is only what it shows, 90% is underneath, and we allow God, we address our, our behaviors on the outside so people can see, we read the Bible, we do a lot of good things, and we should do all those things, but then we never allow God to come deeper because we have so many layers and so many layers, and I think of all those layers, emotions are in all those layers, but because we're afraid of emotions because they mean you're not in faith. And see, I read it to you. I read it to you in the Amplified. And he says, and he says, when you are angry, it says tremble or fear. Because the majority of time when we're angry, it comes from fear. So, but we want to address and we want to change and we want to address just how we're feeling in this section. And God is saying, hey, I want to go deeper. I want to heal you. I want you to come, and I want you to come to me, and I want you to tell me everything that you're feeling. You know, isn't it awesome that God is never afraid of, of like, raw emotions? He just welcomes us as we are and what we're thinking. And I believe that God wants to speak to you tonight because I believe that so many of us here tonight, and I want you to close your eyes and bow your heads, but I believe that many of us tonight here, we find ourselves and we're disappointed. You know, the disappointment is a feeling. Disappointment is just a, is a byproduct or something else. Because disappointment will bring sadness to your, to your soul. Disappointment will bring anger to your soul. Disappointment will bring all this range of emotions. And because we are, you and I are not supposed to feel disappointed, then we don't address it. But I believe that God is knocking at your heart and saying, would you let me in? Would you let me, would you let me go deeper? Would you let me remove some layers that need to be removed? And I don't want you to be afraid of what I'm doing in your life. But I want you to walk this, this year, I want you to grow in me. I want you to prosper in every area of your life just as your soul prospers.
If today's message impacted you in any way and you would like to help us spread the gospel to others by giving a financial gift, please text the number below and we know that someone's life will be changed as yours was today.